Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. It is always a pleasure having you on the show, Journey to Islam. The very essence of this program is to hear information, in fact, first hand information from people who have decided to convert to Islam and specifically Islam Ahmadiyyat. Today on the show with me to discuss his journey to Islam Ahmadiyyat is this man who was born in January 1939. He actually converted to Islam Ahmadiyyat in 1960. In, from 1992 to 2004, he was the member of parliament for the War Central constituency. Whilst there in the first parliament of the Fourth Republic, that was in 1992, as a member of parliament uh, for War Central constituency, he also doubled as the deputy majority leader of parliament then and he was also a minister of state in charge of special duties in the areas of education he is the one i interviewed today and he is the man known as honorable m a saidu honorable you welcome to the show thank you very much honorable could you please uh Tell me a bit about your childhood and if you were in search of God by then. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> my early childhood, well, I was born in Wahia. I attended school here. But meanwhile, I am from Durmo and then settled in Chansa, very close to Wah, All right. during that distance. And uh, we practice traditional religion. So when I was born, I had to do what my parents were doing, and that is worshiping of traditional gods and others. Guess, yeah. That was what I was doing until I came to secondary school in Cape Coast. From Cape Coast, I went to the teacher training college. In fact, my primary school was, I attended primary school in Wahia. That is the present Wa model model school. school. Yeah. Then from there I proceeded to Wa Middle Boarding School. From the boarding school, I found myself in the secondary school in Cape Coast, and that is Agri Memorial Zion Secondary School. All right. From that place, I found myself in a teacher training college, and the training college, the teacher training college, was Wesley College, Kumasi. All right. So actually, you attended Wesley College. Yes, I attended Wesley College in Kumasi, where that. I trained as a teacher. It was during that time that the late A.U. Kalim, a missionary, visited the college and said he wanted to address students. I happened to join them, and during the discussion, he made me know that the only way I, the only way one can be saved is to get into Ahmadiyyat. And I was convinced. And since I got into Ahmadiyyat, I have found everything smooth going. So that man you named A.U. Kalim yes. was an Ahmadi missionary? Yes, he was an Ahmadi missionary. All right. So before your interaction with A.U. Kalim, um, how was your practice of uh, your faith been? Well, how, how had it been? It, it had been one of supporting or following what my parents were doing and then to see how I could also apportion myself or enlighten myself to my God. Yes, so now away from home, were you still able to, whilst at school, um, perform those rituals you well, used to do even before you started yes, school? Yes, I used to because any time, even to go to school, I had to go to them. They had to prepare concoction and other things for me to go back to school with. 
So now, um, at school, you attended church? Yes, that is at uh, the secondary school and teacher training level. That might be somehow around a span of five to six years. Yes. Did you have that faith to practice Christianity? Um, I w and just opposing that uh, with your uh, idol worshiping practice of was, Christianity yes. was an obligation because all pupils in the school was they were expected to attend church and others. So I attended church as an obligation, not because I was convinced. All right. If I were convinced, A.U. Kalim talking to me could not have changed me. But I wasn't convinced, only that it was an obligation. And I attended because I was required to do it. In right. effect, because I was very loyal and attending the churches and other things, the Christians thought they had convinced me to be a Christian. So when I completed college and I came here, they wrote to the Methodist pastor right. that I had been transferred to work. And he followed me to my house in Gombli Muni to ask ah, that you have been transferred to work, but I have never seen you in church. I said, no, I was not a Christian. The only thing is that it was a, a, a regulation of yeah. the college that I should go to church. And that's why I went to church at that time. So now, what particular message from that Ahmadi missionary took you to convert to Islam Ahmadiyyat? The message that convinced me most was that he felt that it was only through Ahmadiyyat that I could be saved. And I believed it because the very moment I converted into Islam, Ahmadiyya as such, I, felt, I found myself at peace. At peace? Yes. And as of now, do you still find that peace where you are? I still do. Seriously, I am convinced that it is only through Ahmadiyyat that I can be saved. So now, that definition of peace in the practice of religion, and in your case, the practice of Islam, uh, uh, Islam Ahmadiyyat, yeah. what is that definition? Um, when I say peace, it is that I got convinced that nothing can happen to me without God, that it's only God that can make me successful. And I also realized that anything that I touched, all the things that I plan to do, they have all been achieved or they come true. And so I was, I'm convinced that it is only true that I'm a dear faith that I can be saved. So now, um, everything you touch, just like the Midas touch, yes. turns into gold. Gold, yeah. And you <laughs> now get convinced yeah. that that is the place to be. Yes. And this is the practice of religion we are talking about. Yes. Then you must be seen or you must be getting close with God yes. that you can communicate to Him. Yes. Do you have that communication with Him? Well, I have it because I say my prayers normally and anything that I need, I put it before God. And God willing, I usually succeed. Why? Don't you think if you were not an Ahmadi Muslim, but uh, belonging to any other sect of Islam, things would still be smooth as they are for you now? I don't believe that if I wasn't an Ahmadi, I would get satisfaction from what I ask from God. I think seriously. And I am convinced because of the community, the people with whom I live in, in Ahmadiyya, that is a contributing factor to the man's success. Life has always been good. Yes. It cannot be good all the time. Definitely. Throughout. Definitely. Definitely you must have faced certain challenges. Yes. Two after your conversion, mm -hmm. would you be, um, would you share some of these challenges with us, yeah. if there are any? Well, definitely, when I converted, the first challenges, or most of the, the early challenges, came from my own parents. They thought I would help them to achieve or get what they are getting. But I wasn't convinced, to, because I knew that 
I, retracing my steps has told me that I cannot do what they are doing. So I helped to convert them from the traditional religion to Islam. Even though they did not agree to become not to become uh, Ahmadis, yeah. but they agreed to become Muslims. And at least that that, that is better than uh, idolatry. Idolatry. That's Idol what I did. All right. So now, how do you feel being an Ahmadi Muslim? Mm -hmm. Do you feel fulfilled? Yes. That uh, zeal you had in serving your God. Have you been able to serve him to the fullest? Well, I, I think I, I, I have been able to serve him to what I think. To your expectation. It's my expectation. But anything else, it is God alone who know what, or the other people who are around, who can judge it for me. All right. Well, well, viewers, if you just joined us, the program is Journey to Islam. And with me discussing his journey today is Honorable M.A. Saidu. Uh, now, tell me, you see, um, today in the media, yeah. people despise Islam because they think Muslims are terrorists. When you come into Islam, Muslims say Ahmadis are not Muslims. Why? Because they associate certain misconceptions with Ahmadiyyat. Misconceptions like Ahmadis do not uh, go to perform the pilgrimage at Mecca. Ahmadis uh, publish their own Quran text that is different from the text of the Holy Quran that uh, has been prescribed and then all other Muslims are using that. And then also Ahmadis uh, do not take the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they don't even mention him when uh, they, 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 they are doing their ikamat and also calling their azan. Some of these misconceptions, ever since your conversion, have you seen them to be true? Um, they can never, as far as I'm concerned, they are never true. If they were true, I would have been the first person to leave Ahmadiyyat and go back to where I was. But I think it is just that they have some special dislike for Ahmadiyyat. For instance, I remember when I was a child, and then they established the Jejereyere Primary School. Yeah. And they were seen playing football. They went about telling stories that the football they are kicking around is the head of um, <coughs> his holy prophet. Something and like this so. cannot be true. Definitely, it's ignorance and sheer hatred, oh. dislike. They felt whatever they would do to discredit Ahmadiyyad was what they were saying, because they saw them as rivals, and that they were making more converts than they were making. So I, I, I don't think there was the, these uh, ideas they were spreading. So you think the misconceptions are uh, deliberate attempts to, to Discredit, to, yes, to, to make sure that they make more people join to, them. To their sites are either than Ahmadiyya. So, um, you, let me take you back a bit. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that uh, it was through you or you were the source of influence uh, that got your parents converted to Islam. Islam, yes. But they did not come along with you to Islam Ahmadiyya. Yes. Now, did you have any problems with them? Because they did not convert to Islam Ahmadiyya. Well, they didn't convert to Islam idea because they had certain ideas. For instance, the way they treat them, at, they, they, they handle funerals. They thought that was the best. And they could not imagine that they will go into a religion and when they die, there is nothing else apart from the burial, nothing else will be done on their behalf. So it is just a a lack of knowledge of what is happening. The misconception of the orthodox. So here where, they, where your parents on one side and you as another side, yeah. did you have problems with them for doing what they did? 
God. I did not have problems with them because I understood them well. I knew that it is lack of knowledge of what is happening. On the converse, did yes. they have a problem with you? Who? The converts? Yeah. On the converse, uh -huh. did your parents have a problem with you for being an Ahmadi Muslim? They did not have. The only thing was that they felt they should, they, they, we should have continued with what they have, the practices they knew. All right. So now, what particular thing about the Ahmadiyyad community, if you got a chance to talk to someone, you would tell them, saying this is that particular reason why you should be an Ahmadi Muslim? Um, the Ahmad, the community, is a community that I have seen to be very faithful to that religion. They like it. Anybody who is part of that religion was liked by them. And they sincerely will help you to achieve what you want to. For instance, in 74, yeah. when there was an opportunity for the Ahmadis to send two people on to Jalsa, that was, that was in Rabwa, 74, they expected two people from the whole of Ghana, and I happened to have been one of them. And the Wallets were here, and they were the Muslim uh, Ahmadiyya community, and they could have got their own children. But me as a convert, they still felt that I should go. And I went with the late Karama Sufyan to Rabua. No. This is a distance. Yeah. And uh, in '92, when I became a candidate for to parliament, to contest for parliament, to contest for yeah. parliament, I had the loyalty of the community. Almost everybody supported me and helped me to win. So the community, Ahmadiyya community, is an example to be followed as far as the work community is concerned. Yeah, you know, I was uh, the first regional director of education for Upper West. For Upper West? Yes. All right. I was the first regional director of education. So it was my duty to be able to project education in the Upper West. And then, unfortunately, it looks as if the Orthodox Muslims we had in this area did not like sending their children to school. In fact, that was what even helped me to establish an able international. And at the moment, the, children, the population, student population there is 2,400. Than able international. Yes. In there. Yeah. And now the people like to send their children to school, and they are sending them to school. Meanwhile, even the Ahmadiyyat industry felt that I could be of service to education. So there was a time they set up a committee for the improvement of education in schools or in Ahmadiyya schools in the country. And I was a member of that committee. The late Amir formed it and I was it. And we went round from, we went to the South to attend meetings. Yeah. We went to the coast to attend meetings, even in the north here, Salga and others, I found that I had to go there and project education. Actually, my aim at that time was to make the people in the Upper West region, the illiterates or the Orthodox Muslims who did not believe in education. They believe that any time you had formal education, yeah. that you could not become a good Muslim. And I told them that it was wrong. It is only by going to school, being exposed to formal education, that you can be of more service to the community than you are. All right. So unity, assistance, sincerity. Yes. And well wishes. It's the reason. Yes. These are the reasons yes. why you think one 
uh, should get to belong to the Ahmadiyya community. Uh, Ahmadiyya. Now, do you have any last words? Last word. My last word will be to advise members, converts, to believe strongly that the Ahmadiyya community in Wahia is prepared to help anybody, no matter whether you are a convert or you are a born Ahmadi, they will help you to go ahead. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable, for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, you yes, uh, the in interaction has been nice, and yes. I would have wished uh, that it travels beyond this point, but unfortunately, uh, time isn't on our side. Yeah. So later on, when we get to have time, maybe we would get interacting again. Well, viewers, this is all that time will uh, uh, allow us for the program, and all in all, we have come to the end. Finding some ways to keep Al Haji has made known to us that Ahmadiyya community is the community that everyone that wishes well for yourself and those close by and those that want to get close to God should belong to. Sincerity, the zeal to assist one another without discrimination is one thing that is common with Islam Ahmadiyyans. Until next time, on the show, Journey to Islam, I say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Rasulullah